Yes, it's real. It's no clickbait. Have a look at my inspector. Here they are, texture, clarity, and most importantly, the haze. Lightroom's presence section, consisting of texture, clarity and dehaze, is a widely known and beloved feature. However, no other application offers these. Until now. They found the way to Final Cut Pro and work just as you'd expect. Beginning with texture. Have a look at this landscape and how drastically we can improve the character of the grass. Of course, the other direction works as well. You can reduce the texture and achieve a softer and dreamlike look. Many people have a love-hate relationship with the clarity slider, but when applied adequately, you can achieve some stunning results, like here on this beautiful drone shot. As you can see, with just one slider you can achieve some very dramatic looks. And in my opinion, the star of the show is the dehaze slider. Look at the results you can achieve with the dehaze slider only. I think it speaks for itself. But don't just take my word for it. I asked someone who you probably know. Half, what's your take on these? Thanks, Eric. Yeah, I I've been waiting for this kind of thing for, for years now. In fact, I did a video, I think uh, maybe five years ago, something like that, called Final Cut Wish List of Features. And the presence controls were, were one of the wishes. And this actually might have been before dehaze was actually introduced to Lightroom. So Specifically, what I was after was clarity, and um, that's just that's just one of my favourite controls in uh, in Lightroom. It just it adds um, contrast in a really interesting way, and so I I have no idea what's happening. I have no idea how you did it. Um, so so yeah, really really happy to have that. Uh, and then I guess we have um, texture, which um, to me, I think it's easy to compare to something like sharpening, but it's not. Uh, it adds um, kind of this grittiness, doesn't it? Um, so I actually actually prefer to, to, if I'm using that one, I like to dial it down just a little bit and um, it adds quite a natural kind of uh, sort of softening effect. And that's um, that's really nice for... Uh, footage shot with um, something like this Sony A7 IV, which gives you very sharp looking footage. Um, and then we have dehaze, and I use this in the traditional way, which is you know with landscapes to kind of add to add back a bit of that um, you know the, the contrast and, and saturation of the of the background layers. And um, yeah, it, again, I I don't know how I don't know how you've managed to do it. Uh, I guess if I was to achieve that without using this dial, it would be with um, curves, I suppose, would be the nearest thing. Um, anyway, I feel like I'm waffling now. Uh, you can't use these too aggressively, I found in my experience, but, you know, a um, little bit goes a long way. And, um, yeah, I just, I love that they exist. So thank you, Eric. Back to you. There you have it. Half, thank you so much. And yes, you are absolutely right. The operations going on underneath are so incredibly complex that they are just not a viable thing to do when editing. Thanks to the knowledge I gained from working as a photographer and as a colorist for some years, I was able to create this plugin and hopefully mimic its functionality as closely as possible. And as with all my plugins, you can mask, track and keyframe everything. 